Hello, my name is Mike Brown. I am the Senior NEC Support and Sales Application Engineer at Sotel Systems. This is the first in a series of videos that we are producing to help integrators with installing NEC solutions. Sotel is both a hardware distributor and cloud SIP provider based in St. Louis, Missouri, with locations spread throughout North America and Canada. Let's get started. When connecting to the Internet Telephony Service Provider through the Internet, it is recommended to use NAT or Network Address Translation and do not assign a public IP addresses to the 2100. Using WebPro, we need to identify the amount of SIP trunks allocated as well as VOIP resources. Clicking on the License Upload file, followed by dropping down the menu, we will find how many licenses are applied for SIP trunks. In this case, 5001 is set to 6 for SIP trunks and 5103 is set to 8 for VOIP resources. Next, we go to System Data to disable the DHCP server, which by default is enabled on. Simply by unchecking the box and clicking Apply, you will disable DHCP server. Next, we'll assign static IP addresses to the VOIP daughter board. In this example, we're not using the Ethernet port. We are programming the VOIP board. We'll program setting in the default gateway. In 07, we'd program the NAT router address if used. 09 and 10 would be the IP address and the subnet mask used. After setting this data, click the Apply button and a reset is required after this. Next, we must assign the static IP address to the VOIP daughter board. This is done in command 8426. This IP address is useful when doing port forwarding behind a router using UDP ports as shown below. When program is complete, press the apply button. Next, we must assign the SIP system information, which is in command 1028. This is information given to you by Sotel Systems. First of all, we're using the default profile 1 throughout this example. Next, we enter the domain name, SotelSystems.com, followed by the host name, VOIP, using the UDP transport protocol and domain name assignment as applied. When done, click the Apply button. Now we must assign the SIP ports to the system. This is done in command 1068. Setting number 01 will define the SIP trunk itself with the starting point, in this example trunks 100, and how many trunks we're assigning to the system. In this case it's 4. Click the apply button when complete. Command 1029 will assign SIP server information provided by Sotel Systems. Using the Profile 1, we'll drop down menu to Registration Mode and set it to Manual. Register domain name we will set to voip.sotelsystems.com, leaving the proxy domain name and proxy host name blank. The SIP carrier of choice for Sotel System Trunks is Carrier N. If using a NAT router, 102921 will be checked for used. When done in this profile, click the apply button to move to the next step. Now we must program the SIP trunk registration information provided by Sotel Systems. Using profile 1 with registration ID, we will check the registration method, input the user ID followed by the authentication user ID and finally the authentication password. When complete, click the apply button. Now for some basic trunk information. We go to command 1401 to assign each individual trunk in the drop-down to a name and also, for one important trunk-to-trunk -trunk transfer bit that is turned on. 
Do this for all your trunks and when done, click the apply button. Next we go to command 1405, we're replacing the individual trunks into a route. In this example we're using trunks 100 through 103 and route 10. The priority is 100 through 103 which can be changed as needed. When done, click the apply button. Now in command 1406 we assign a priority to the trunk group. In this case priority 1 is using trunk route 10 as its first option with no second choice. When done, click the apply. In command 1418, we will specify the SIP trunks to the profile. By default, profile 1 is used. If changed, we will need to apply as needed. Now for some basic DID programming. In command 2202, we will set the individual SIP trunks for all modes to DID. When done, click the Apply button. In class of service options, command 2008, for class of service 1 through 15, we want to assign the set calling party number to enable. When done, click the apply button. Now we must set an outgoing call services command 2117 the calling party information that is sent to the network for the individual trunks. As you'll see in this example we're using 415-529-7113. When done, Check the Apply button. In the next command, 2119, we can assign the calling party number on a per extension basis. If you'll notice, we're still using Profile 1. This information is sent to the network each time a call is made from those extensions. When done, click the Apply button. To enable the DNS, or domain name server, we use command 1067 to turn on DNS mode followed by the DNS IP address. When this is complete, click the apply button. This final slide in command 1054 allocates the VOIP daughter board resources and the licenses assigned to the system. As you'll notice in this example, the SL2100 is using the built-in VOIP, so the quantity will show up as zero. When done, click the Apply button.